Are we good? Are we live? Let's see. Okay, we're live. All right. Uh -huh. I see it. Make sure your uh -huh. phone's off. Just 33 people are waiting. It's a delay. So they can hear everything we're saying. Even though <laughs> there we are. Hi. Good morning. It's working. Hi. Are... All right. So look, the camera's over there. Can you guys wave? Good morning, guys. So who here is at home with multiple children this morning? Hi, guys. Welcome back to our channel. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to our channel. <laughs> Uh, These Matt girls Carey's are here. What's yeah, up, Matt? Good morning. Jonathan oh Sullivan says, "Is there a link I can share to others?" Yes, you can. Uh, share. You should be able to just click on the URL at the top of your browser and just share that. That's probably the easiest thing. Yes. We're working on a custom URL, but it, it's just—it's a longer story than probably worth it. Uh, so yeah, let us know if uh, the audio and stuff is okay. We're, we're kind of makeshift set up here in the Kirkland Casa. Yes, so we. And babies are. So our abounding. first week from home, doing the live stream from our home. So this one wants to get my laptop. She wants to get it. All right, mom's gone. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. Come back to my channel before we get started. Click that. <laughs> that from somewhere else. Yeah. From Trinity Madison. Yeah, Jinx. I figured. Jinx. Well, all right. We are, uh, we're glad you're here. <laughs> we're we're uh, definitely feeling what a lot of you are feeling on Sundays when we've gotten some comments from people saying that it's this, it's, it's the craziness to try and get everybody to watch. Um, and so, yeah, so really, really, um, in it with you, <laughs> trying to keep, keep it all together, um, through this crazy time we're in right now. Um, if anybody doesn't know, this is Cora. Cora, say hi. Hi. There you go. And this is Evelie. Hi. Evelie, is there anybody in your class that you want to say hi to? Because they might be watching right now. Ooh, who do we say hi to? Keep your dress up. Can you say hi to Aubrey and Gwen? Hi, Aubrey and Gwen. Gwen! Nice job. Oh, I think Grace is watching too. Hi, Grace. Yep. Oh my gosh. Oh, they said they gave you thumbs up. They gave you thumbs up just now. So what they mean is give us a big thumbs up, meaning like button. So you can hit the like button. Yeah, um, and subscribe. And if you're not subscribe, subscribe to our channel. you want to subscribe. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. The ship scrubs down below. That's right. Um, I am actually looking and going to ask for some help from my friends. Because um, we've got uh, Mountain View staff is on the chat. So uh, Matt Carey's on there to talk with youth and whoever else. Um, uh, we've got some overseers in there. We've got Tracy in there. All in their homes but logged in and ready to comment. And one of the things I'm noticing is I forgot to put in, we're gonna be talking about a um, care drive that we're doing. And so um, I forgot to put in the details for that and the link that everyone's gonna click. So if someone could update those details, um, they should uh, activate in real time, but that would be great because I forgot to do it. Anything you wanna talk about? I wanna talk about okay, my what? friends. Okay, what Some friends? School. What, well, but, okay, from school, who? Scotty. Scotty? Yeah, we found out that hi, our... Scotty. Hi, Scotty. We found out that our friends from school actually live in our neighborhood. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, and it's Cora's friend. Cora's friend. Um, 
We are. I'm distracted by the baby in the other room. <laughs> so we know that you're watching our video on YouTube. So if you want to keep watching, give us a big, big, big thumbs up. Give us two thousand hundred. I think these girls need their own YouTube channel. <laughs> Yeah, let's ask everybody a question. How about, is anybody watching that has kids? Can they comment and say, we have kids here with us? We have kids here with us! No, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to ask them. Do you have kids watching at home right now? Do you have kids, kids watching, watching at home? home? Comment down below. <laughs> yeah, comment if you have kids watching. And we can say hi to them. Let's see. The Borgonias. Probably saying that wrong again, but Bogonias, they're they're here. Yeah. Um let's see. We got big thumbs up from Matt Carey. So that's good. <laughs> School shout outs. Yeah, they are YouTube superstars. So we're gonna continue to bang this drum. Guys, guess what? This is our first time doing this. It is. Just all the thumbs up. Let's see. Um, oh, look. That's Tori and her mommy. Let me see. Right there. Let me see. Mommy. And she says, I love Coco Bug and <laughs> Emily. Coco Bug. Yeah, doesn't Stephanie call you that? Yeah. Paisley and Sabra and Beckham are there. They're watching you right now. <gasps> oh. <laughs> no screaming. So, guys, um, so when it's our first time, we might get really excited. Your phone's on the couch, babe. Because, um, us might get really Just excited because it's our first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, how glad this is. Okay, I have had one sip of coffee. One sip. Uh, so this is extra insane. Oh my goodness. Let me see. Tracy does this so well without any effort, I feel like. Which Tracy's on here, so if you want to say hi. And that's one of the things I actually want to talk about, guys. Um, not a lot of people have necessarily seen our... If you want um, to talk about this, just click down below. Not a lot of people have seen our how-to um, YouTube video. Um, we did kind of a how-to, like, get a, you know, be a part of the live streams. And one of the things towards the end of the video is... Um, just how this chat gets used. So some people, they just don't want to engage in it. That's okay. Um, we would love to know that you're watching and know that you're here. So um, when you can hit a like button or, or make a comment afterwards or something, just so we know you're connected and a part of it. You know, we probably have um, something like 20 or 30 or maybe more, but um, people who are actually engaging in the comments. But there's probably 219, 220 people who are watching um, when we're on. And so being able to sit down, being able to, um, know that you're here is really good. I'm talking right now. Go wait till I'm done. Okay. <laughs> um, so being able to know that you're here is really good, but then also for everybody else to, to hear from you and see you. And that's the big thing for me, especially in this time. That's kind of our lobby time is for, you want to go to mama? Here, Mama can sit with you. All the parents that can relate to this right now, just go ahead and comment that, please. Um, so yeah, so just um, being able to say hey to each other. So it's it's one thing to say good morning to us, and yeah, big thumbs up, and all that. But to be able to say hi to each other when you see a name, you know, it it's just like when somebody sees you at church and you give them that you know handshake or I guess elbows at this point. But to give everybody those. Um, those hellos and that thing that makes Mountain View feel so warm and at home, it's you guys, it's the people. And so for you to be able to do that, even on a chat, create warmth and create that inviting atmosphere, you have the ability to do that. So saying hi to, you know, to everybody else, um, calling out some specific people that you see in the chat and saying hi, that would be, you know, super awesome. So, um, you want to talk now? Sorry. <laughs> Okay, go ahead, Cora. 
You want to do that? You can do it. Go ahead. Um, follow us on Instagram and make sure you give us all the thumbs up and make sure you, you do a big, big heart. Yeah, a big heart on Instagram. So yeah. what's our Instagram? NBC.life. Can you say that? NBC.life. Huh? Oh, no, dot. Life. I think it's dot. Pretty sure it's dot. We'll see. We'll see so, if that's right. Mom's going to check it. So, like, um, so we, um, know we, um, help each other, so we hope that you, um, give us a huge thumbs up. We really do. So, and lots of and, thumbs up. And a big, <laughs> big balloon heart, so we know that you're here. Yeah, and on Instagram, it's at mvc.life. So, is that. Um, hi Jacob, how's it going bud? So glad you're watching. Can you say hi to Jacob? Hi, hi Jacob. You're so cool man. Um, what's that? Oh yeah, that's the big thing. Thank you babe. So we're going to be um, sharing communion today. I'm going to lead us in just a second through some communion um, time. So if you want to take this chance to grab what kind of elements you might have. Um, I ran into uh, Andy Neal actually at Trader Joe's yesterday and he was picking up some stuff um, and picking up some stuff for communion. So just anything that can represent the body and something that can represent um, the blood, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome to, to have ready so that when we're in our time of worship and we go into a time of communion, you'll have those things ready to go. We make sure that it goes away. Um, the virus is not going to go away until 10 years. <laughs> In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> wow. That was a prayer. That was so adorable. Yeah, can you pray, Ev? Let's just pray for everybody who's watching right now, okay? Who's watching? Everyone's watching. You want to pray for them? I don't know who's watching. Okay, just pray for who you want to then. Okay. Okay, ready? Dear God, thank you for this. Okay, this isn't a silly prayer. This is a real prayer. I want to hear your real prayer. Okay. okay. Dear God, thank you for this day. I thank you for totally and for, um, Paisley and Sabra and JJ and I thank you for everybody and everybody who's watching right now and Jesus we pray. Amen. Good job girls. Alright, you can head upstairs. Oh yeah, you wanna say bye? That's the whole video. I know that'll be after. No, go ahead and say say bye to everybody. We're gonna we're gonna go into some worship time, so you guys gotta have some space. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get started in just a sec, guys. I wanted to take a second actually um, to be able to Marty Mance. I know these girls, they're like prayer warriors for sure. They just. It's the it's the youngness that makes them be silly more than <laughs> more than serious, but that's all right. I love it. Um, I wanted to take a second just to um, yes, make sure that you guys are following us on Instagram, um, that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, that you go to the website and um, subscribe to the email list, become um, someone who's catching all those updates because there's just there's so much that's going on and it can probably feel like you're. Um, if you're not connected to those streams of communication, it can probably feel like you're missing out on some things or, or that we're not, that there's not a lot going on. Um, and so it's just great for us to be able to, um, to stay connected and, and keep you informed. We have a lot of things that are still going on, even though we're far apart, we are very close together. I mean, we're, we're about to have communion over many tables, one family over many tables and and then there's things that we are able to do. And so 
Um, hey, Evs, don't touch the camera, babe. Okay? Head upstairs. Go up, go upstairs. Go potty upstairs. This is this is awesome. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about was um, after worship today, uh, the junior high are gonna actually go on Instagram and NBCYouth.jh is our junior high Instagram. Um, they're gonna actually be doing a live um, with Hannah, maybe with Hannah and Matt. Um, and so that's a big thing. So you can go, youth, anybody, anybody who's youth who's watching, you can go on and go to Instagram Live, nbcyouth.jh if they're not already following. Um, that's a big thing. And then um, the last thing is just to celebrate what has been going on. So our care team, if you're unaware, if you didn't see the video that of Brick, um, our care team, you coming in? You want to tell them about this? Okay, tell them. Tell them. Say hi. Say hi. Yeah. So our... <laughs> this worked great, babe. Why don't you come in here and help me out? <laughs> okay, so we got some things to celebrate. So we, we launched a care team very quickly. Lots of people got involved, which is great. We still need lots more hands to get involved for sure. But um, we launched a care team and an email. It's just care at mvc.life. And care at MVC, mvc.life is, um, it's gonna connect you to everything we have going on that's us being the hands and feet uh, of Jesus to our communities. And so just a couple things that we did. We started five teams. Um, we started a call team, um, people who were calling all the people that, that go to Mountain View. Um, and so we need more people on that team because there are so many people who've crossed paths with Mountain View. We want every single one of those people to be checked in on and make sure they're doing okay. So um, that's an awesome team. I'm not gonna remember all these teams for sure, but um, a prayer team who's just getting all the, the prayer requests you guys have coming in. Um, and so anytime a prayer request comes in, there's a team of people who are immediately there covering you in prayer, um, contending with you. And, um, and then we have people who are actually making deliveries and, and things like that. Um, there's just, there's more than I can even remember to do with all that's going on. we want on. to say thank you. A huge thank, we want you, to say to thank you to everybody yeah. who's on that team, who's been serving in that way. Um, um, Brick got an update. Of, there, there's been hundreds of calls made to our people. Um, every single prayer request and every single um, meal um, has been made or met um, by our team. Every single one. Um, people are helping with child care so others have, that have essential functions can go to work. Um, we've been able to use the generosity fund. So, so some of you have maybe heard generosity fund or G fund. That's kind of our benevolence fund. So um, it's our way of, it, we, we contribute to it in our own budget and then people go above and beyond. So if you go to NBC.life and go to give, the, the ways that you can give are to our building fund, to your normal offering and tithe, um, or to our generosity fund. And that G, G fund, when it gets built up, it, this, it's times like this, it's going towards um, things like this. And so um, we've been able to serve people and provide every need that's come in for the generosity fund. Um, we are expanding the team to include uh, mental health professionals, spiritual directors, and others to help our church family with practical tools and resources. And there's a lot coming up. And so just a huge thank you to everybody who's been a part of that. A huge thank you to all the people who've been so generous and they're giving um, for both just covering our, our normal expenses, but also uh, for the G Fund so that that can be helpful. And then the big thing I wanted to talk about is actually our care drive. So our care drive is coming up on April 6th. Care drive is coming up on April 6th. Um, we're gonna be hosting it at our Mountain View campus. Um, we're gonna do all the precautions we need to to make it a safe place. But there's two ways that you can participate in this. Um, one, you can actually, once the link is updated here in the, in the thing, <laughs> I don't know if it has been. You might have to refresh your browser. But once it's updated in your browser, um, you'll click the link. That'll take you to um, the Red Cross. We're, we're working with the Red Cross to set up a blood drive in our lobby. Um, and when you click on that link, it's gonna take you to a zip code. Um, you'll enter in the zip code 92675, which is our San Juan location. Um, and then you're gonna search by distance or, or by date. I, I, I don't know which one, but when you search that and, and, and look for Mountain View, just go through the tabs until you find Mountain View, 
you'll get the ability to click there and sign up and put your name in the hat to say, I'm, I'm gonna come and, and you'll be able to select a time slot, I believe. So that's one way you can interact with it. The other way is that you can come to the church and drop off medical supplies. So we're trying to get hand sanitizer, masks, gloves, isolation gowns, disinfecting wipes, tissues, alcohol pads, uh, fabric masks are also needed for anybody who's uh, making those um, or you know somebody who's making those. And so that's just an awesome way that we can uh, care for our communities um, and, and be a part of, of what's happening to bring restoration. And so um, so two ways, so click, click a link, um, sign up with the Mountain View Blood Drive at the Red Cross, and then drop off supplies. And I'll, I'll make sure to include in the description uh, after the live thing, if it's not already updated, um, I'll make sure to include the, um, all the list of, of supplies we're trying to collect. Um, we actually had our overseer, Jody Giles, let me grab my, <laughs> this is how I'm doing everything. Got it. So our, our overseer, one of our overseers, Jody Giles, he actually went and, and started this thing off. And so we have a video from him and uh, I'm gonna cue that now. I think that's everything. Is there anything I need to say in here? April 6th at Mountain View Church. That's right, Tracy. Uh, hey, Will. Hey, Monty. Well, let's check out this video from Jody when he uh, took the first step, when he went first uh, at our, um, our efforts to care. donating blood. Uh, I got great news for you. Our church on April 6th is opening up its doors to provide a safe environment where you too can donate blood. Right now, there is a critical shortage of blood and you can understand why donations have dropped off and demand is even higher. So be a part of MDC Cares. You can show your care, you can show your love for the community by participating in our blood drive. April 6th, sign up today. All right, let's sing a newer song, but the words will be uh, right below me here or somewhere in this area. So feel free to follow along.
darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You light in the darkness, hope for hopelessness. So I think um, now would be just a good time to um, take those elements that you you grabbed, so that we can receive communion together, one family over many tables. Um, just as we're thinking about this, that is who you are, the God who always comes through, the God who's got our back. Um, and so, when you take that bread, I'd love for you to. Serve that to somebody else if you can. Because we receive communion, we don't take communion. And so as we're receiving communion, you're, you're going to hand that, you're going to serve that to someone. And you're just going to say, you know, this is the body of Christ that was broken for you. And sometimes people respond, sometimes people don't, but you can respond. Just praise be to God or thank you, Jesus. Anything like that? So you take the bread. You can do that now. And you take whatever kind of drink element you have. Um, water or whatever that might be. And then you're going to just say, this is the blood of Christ that was shed for you say poured out for you <laughs> it's really your language your way of just representing that 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 gospel story to um, to the people you're with let me just pray God we thank you for your gift thank you for the way that you um, you came you came and you lived with us, lived among us, walked steps that we would one day walk, and gave us a path forward, a way. Just so grateful, God. So grateful that you lit up my life, revealed to me your love and your truth, gave me vision to see the world the way you see it, gave me a comforter in your spirit, Holy Spirit, we love you, we thank you for coming, God, would you just restore our union with you? give everything and everything else that might stand in the way of that union. We just hand it over to you. We just surrender to you now. Be afraid. 
afraid Don't be afraid For I am with you Jesus, in our union with you, we unite with your peace. We just receive all the riches of your kingdom over our lives today. Your peace and your, your health. God, your ability to be patient and at rest in the middle of storms. We just receive that over our life today. And God, help us to see your goodness in all this. No matter what stories we're, we're seeing, that you give us compassion for all that people might be experiencing, but that you'd also give us, God, just a sense of how you might be working. To look for that to hold out for it, to see the sun coming up when it feels dark. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, so we're going to go to um, Todd at his house, um, and he's got a message for us today. So I'll hand it over to Todd. Hey, good morning. I'm glad to have you with us, and we're finishing out this series on practicing the way of Jesus. We've been in it for, gosh, a couple months now, and as we've been practicing, you know, we're practicing just in the nick of time because uh, we've had to be on our own at home. We've had kind of a forced sabbatical, Sabbath. We've had time to rest. We've had time to practice solitude, silence, prayer. We've had time to really need that pause app. And I know a lot of you have used that and used some of the prayers that we've been teaching you. We've been having these prayer meetings on Thursday nights and those have been well attended and great. And thank you for joining us on those. Thanks for your participation. And thanks for your continued generosity. You know, our church is an amazingly generous church. Um, people have given even more over and above in this season than their normal tithes and offerings. People are giving to the G Fund, which is our generosity fund, where we're able to help some families in need. We wish we could do more, but there's so many people with so many needs, but at least we can do a little bit and alleviate some of those. If you still want to give to those things, you can do that. Uh, you can just go on mvc.life. In the upper right corner, there's a Give button, and uh, you can select the drop-down menu to give regular tithes and offerings or to give to the generosity fund or the building fund. As you continue to do that, our church is going to continue to, to move forward. We're going to continue to produce resources. And as long as we are not able to meet live, we will be meeting virtually, um, you know, and these channels on YouTube and Facebook and everywhere else that we can do this. This is a mug that my friend Jason Wood made. Jason, shout out. Um, so today I'm finishing this series uh, on, the, gen or on the, um, the practicing the way of Jesus. And the next week is Palm Sunday. And we're going to get ourselves prepared for Palm Sunday and Easter. I'm actually going to teach every day that week through kind of the passion narratives in the Gospel of John as we move toward um, Easter and get ourselves ready for Easter. So I hope you'll join us for, for Easter and for finishing out the book of John all together. Um, but we'll get you more information about that this coming week. But for now, 
I want to take you into uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12. Um, and it's a passage of scripture that Jesus is teaching. And it's one of the, the ways of Jesus that we saw him really model for us. But it's something that he taught his disciples that was really powerful. And it was about generosity. Because Jesus was the most general, generous human that ever lived, arguably. And I, I believe it's because he is the very image of God and he demonstrates the heart of God, which is a heart of generosity, that God gives us all good things. You know, as Jesus' brother James said, all good gifts come down from the Father of lights without whom there is, there's no shit, where with whom there's no shifting of shadow. He's always generous. He's always good. And that really, for me, is a paradigm of how I look at God. You know, Ryan says it a lot. You know, we have a good God in a good mood. And he is. He's a good father, and he loves to give good gifts to his children. And, um, you know, from the beginning, when God creates everything, he created abundance. You know, think about how many, how much water is there in the ocean. You know, I'm sitting next to the ocean now, and I can see there's a lot of water in the ocean. Think about how many different creatures there are that live in the ocean. Think about how many types of strange creatures live on the land and live in the sky. How many types of fruit and vegetables there are that grow on the land and even in the sea. How many different uh, types and you know, colors and languages of humans there are all over the face of the earth. All kinds of creativity and variety and beauty and abundance. And God creates abundance. And when Jesus came, he was generous and he demonstrated the generosity of God. The first miracle he did was this miracle where he turned water into wine and not just a little bit of wine, an abundance of wine, way more than they possibly needed. He fed food, uh, you know, 5,000 people with a couple of loaves and fishes and multiplied it to the point where he was able to, um, you know, they had, they had 12 baskets left over. See, God is a God of abundance. He always has more than enough. And right now we've been in this season of, um, I think a lot of people freaking out about scarcity. When the stock market crashed, even our president this week is saying that he wants to get things back on track, you know, by Easter. And while we would all love that, that may not be the best thing. We'll see what happens. But I know he's anxious and other people are anxious because they want to get the economy back on track because stock market crash, people are out of work. I know several people in our church that have lost jobs. Um, you know, one that, you know, we, we talked a few weeks ago with Matt Baum at church, right? This, I think it was the last Sunday that we met together about the film that he was, that was coming out, I still believe, with Jeremy Camp. And their film debuted the weekend that everything got shut down. And it was number two in America, but it, you know, got cut short. And so now it's actually coming out on, uh, on video in, in your home this week. So I'd encourage you to pay for it and go watch it because they spend a lot of money on that. And speaking of abundance, we can be generous by, um, you know, giving to that. Um, but, you know, God is a God of abundance and Jesus demonstrated abundance, but lately people have been having this scarcity. They're going out, taking all the toilet paper. I mean, we've seen so many memes of everybody um, stealing toilet paper, and I, I think we've kind of played out all the toilet paper jokes. But that is a great example of this scarcity mentality that when people are freaking out that there's not going to be enough, they take for themselves. And that fear that causes people to take, it's been going on from the very beginning in the, in the Bible. We see it in, you know, in the Garden of Eden when Eve sees the fruit, that it looks good for food, but she takes it for herself rather than trusting God to give it to her, um, that, you know, all through the Bible, we see that played out. There's an actual, there's a video that I want to show you of this, and it's from the Bible Project, and I love the Bible Project so much. You can actually, with your kids, use this, and we'll send out some discussion questions and some other scriptures to look up, but I want to show it to give you a little context for the way that the Bible presents um, the generosity of God as an abundant host with enough for everybody and how believing in that God can make a difference for you and me. So watch this. Imagine your friend invites you to a party. You arrive and there's lots of people, decorations, food and drink. There's enough for everyone. 
When you're hosted by someone that generous, you don't have to worry about your needs. You can just enjoy yourself and focus on the people around you. Yeah, that's what a good host wants for her guests. And this is the picture of the world that we find in the Bible. Creation is an expression of God's generous love. He's the host and humans are his guests in a world of opportunity and abundance. And we're called to keep the party going, to spread his goodness. This is a beautiful picture, but it's not the way people experience the world. Rather, we find a world of scarcity and struggle, not abundance. And Jesus grew up in that kind of world. Under military occupation, people losing their land or families to debt and poverty. And yet, he would say things like this. Look at the birds. They don't store up food for themselves, yet they have enough. Or consider the wildflowers. They're beautiful and abundant, and they don't stress about their existence. And you all should live that way, too. But surely Jesus knew that things don't always work out. I mean, sometimes there really isn't enough. And Jesus did experience poverty firsthand, but he viewed the world through the story of the Hebrew scriptures, which claimed that our scarcity problem isn't caused by a lack of resources. Rather, the problem is our mindset that God can't be trusted. Maybe God's holding out on me. Maybe there isn't enough, and maybe I need to take matters into my own hands. And once we're deceived into that mindset of scarcity, we can justify the impulse to take care of me and mine before anyone else. And that leads to envy and anger, violence, and a world where it seems like there's not enough. The party's over, it's turned into a battleground. But God wants humans to experience his generosity, and so he chooses one people, the family of Abraham, and he promises to give them the abundance that he wants for everybody else. God will provide what they need. All they have to do is trust his generosity. And through them, the whole world will see how generous the host really is. But that's not what happens. Abraham's descendants, the Israelites, enter a land of abundance and they promptly forget the host who gave it to them. They act like it's all theirs and like there's not enough. And it leads to war and Israel's self-destruction. If I were the host of this party, I think I'd just give up. But God doesn't give up. What he does is surprising. He gives another gift. Another gift? Yeah, but this gift is different. What God gives is himself. All right, and Jesus, the host himself, comes to join in on the spoiled party. And notice, Jesus lives with the conviction that there is enough and that our generous host can be trusted. His mindset of abundance allowed him to live sacrificially and generously, even towards his enemies. And Jesus called his followers to trust in God's abundance like him. And that's why he said things like, sell your possessions and give to the poor, or don't worry about your life. He's inviting us to live by a different story, one that is built on trust in God's goodness and love. But living generously, doesn't mean life is gonna go well. I mean, look at Jesus. He was betrayed by his friends and he suffered. And this was no surprise to Jesus. He knew that people would take advantage of his generosity. In fact, that was his plan. Really? Yeah, think about it. Jesus knows that we're all hopelessly deceived by this lie that there's not enough. Yeah, that lie needs to be defeated. And so that's what Jesus was doing when he gave us the gift of his life. Jesus' death was the ultimate expression of God's generous love. Yeah, God's love can turn death into life and scarcity back into abundance. Or as the Apostle Paul put it, you know the gift of our Lord Jesus the Messiah, that even though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. And Jesus called his followers to live like the real party has begun. Yes, he called it the kingdom of God. And our invitation to this party is yet another gift, the personal presence of God's own spirit that can teach us how to trust the generosity of the host, just like Jesus did. Yeah, and when you believe there's enough, you start seeing opportunities for generosity everywhere with our time and money, our attention. Yes, one of the most important ways that we can experience the abundance of God's new creation is sharing with others because of our trust that God is the generous host. If you trust the generosity of the host the way Jesus did, you can become the kind of generous human that Jesus was. Jesus was the most generous person that ever lived. He was 
the image of the generous God who created everything, like we already talked about. But when Jesus showed up, he, he not only multiplied wine, but he did it abundantly. He not only multiplied food, but he did it with leftovers. He not only healed people that were sick, but he did it liberally. He not only gave forgiveness, but he did it at the hardest times from the cross when people were killing him. Jesus was the generosity of God on display. And the reason is because Jesus didn't have to take care of himself because he knew that he had a Father in heaven who was taking care of him. And when you know God, the generous God that Jesus knows as his Father, who is your Father, it changes how you live. When you know who your God is, when you know what your goal is, Jesus' goal was to see God's kingdom come and his will done on earth as is in heaven. And Jesus' treasure was in heaven because he wasn't working for trying to build up reserves here on earth. He was working for blessing people and seeing them come into God's kingdom so that he could see them in heaven with blessing and helping Poor people that God, you know, Jesus called laying up treasure in heaven. And one of the places where he teaches that the most is in um, chapter 12 of Luke. And he says this. I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat, or about your body, what you'll wear. For life is more than food, and the body is more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They don't sow or reap or have storerooms or barns, yet God feeds them. How much more valuable are you than birds? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you can't do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wildflowers grow. They don't labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. And if that's how God clothes the grass and the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? I love Jesus' imagery of the outdoors. I love being outside. It's one of the things that I love by living near the beach But I got outside yesterday and went up walking in the hills. I walked on the Patriot Trail with a friend. We kept our distance six feet apart. Um, But I love how the wildflowers are in bloom. All the mustard plants that always remind me of what Jesus said, that the kingdom spreads like mustard, like mustard seed that starts really small and spreads all over the world. Kind of like a virus. He probably would have used that illustration if he had it at the time. But the, the flowers are all in bloom. And by the way, that's probably why your nose is running and your throat has a tickle. It's probably the allergies and not the coronavirus. So don't freak out. I got a little itch right there. But um, the flowers are everywhere. And in a few weeks, maybe a month from now, they're going to dry out and they're going to have to be mowed down and, and burned to get rid of it. So it's not a fire hazard. And if God is that abundant with clothing the fields with wildflowers every year, and if God takes care of birds, as I was walking out there, I noticed that the swallows have come back to Capistrano even though they canceled the Swallows Day Parade. The swallows didn't get the memo. They're everywhere. They're darting back and forth all over the place. There's eagles and ravens and there's all kinds of birds, butterflies, beauty in abundance, and God provides for all of his creatures. And Jesus, from observation, encourages us to consider the birds, to consider the flowers, to look at them and when we look at them, to think about them, to meditate on them, to to think about how they got the way they are, how beautiful they are, how provided for they are, and to remember that the one who takes care of them is the one who's your father. And twice here he says, how much more will God do it for you? How much more valuable are you? You are a human being. You are at the high point of his creation and God cares about you. And if he can take care of birds and he can take care of flowers, he can take care of you. 
Jesus goes on, he says, don't set your heart on what you'll eat or drink or don't even worry about it. And I know some of you are worried about it because you're like, it's going to be, you know, everything's gone at the grocery store. I was at the grocery store and you can only get one bread item. So I got to choose whether I want to have, you know, bagels or bread or tortillas. It's like you got to pick one. And that rationing is there because of the fact that people are freaking out with a scarcity mentality that there's not going to be enough. Because if they believe that there is a God of enough, a God of abundance who takes care of birds and flowers, he can take care of you. And all of the nations worry about there not being enough and all of the news outlets worry about there not being enough ventilators or hospital beds. But listen, you have a father, a father in heaven who says that there's enough. And we can either choose to believe in his abundance and trust him, or we can run around panicking and taking for ourselves at the expense of others because we're worried that there's not enough. See, Jesus says, don't worry. How much more valuable are you? Do we really believe in this God who is abundantly generous that Jesus put on display and taught us about? He continues on, don't set your heart on what you'll eat or drink or worry about it for the pagan world, the Gentiles, those who are not yet believing in Jesus, worry about all such things. But your father knows that you need them. Your father knows that you need them. It'd be silly for your little kids to worry that there wasn't going to be enough for them because you, their parents, know what they need and you're going to take care of them. Jesus is saying, your father knows what you need, but seek first his kingdom and all these other things will be given to you as well. He'll take care of all these other things. You seek his kingdom. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. God is not holding out on you. God is not stingy. God is not like reluctantly like, okay, I'll give you a little bit. God is pleased to give you the kingdom. All the inheritance that's coming to Jesus, God wants to give to you. In fact, we read a couple weeks ago in Romans 8 where it says, if God didn't hesitate to give us his son, how much more will he not also give us everything that we need? See, God isn't holding out. He's a God, he's a father who could be trusted. He's a father who knows what you need. He's a father who is pleased to give you everything. And so he continues, he says, so sell your possessions, give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that won't wear out and treasure in heaven that won't fail where no thief comes near and no moth destroys for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Listen, some of you have been losing heart lately, not just because of the, the virus and the quarantine, but man, the stock market, the economy, some people have lost jobs. It's a serious time and it's hard. And I don't make light of any of it. But I will tell you this, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If your hope is in the stock market, if your goal has been to build up a nest egg, to be able to retire and to be, that's where your security comes from, of course you're going to be a mess. Of course you're going to be worried. If your security is in your job to be able to provide rather than in God, your father providing for you through your job. Of course you're going to be worried. Everybody's worried. People that don't know God as their generous Father in heaven worry about those kind of things. It's natural and normal for people that don't believe in a generous God who provides for all of their needs to be worried. But for you, you who know the Father of Jesus as your Father, you who have seen him put on display by the way Jesus is and the way Jesus has been generous with you. You don't have to worry. See, there's three questions that, that come to my mind as I read this passage that I am asking um, myself 
And I would encourage you to ask yourself to kind of just get your, your head and your heart wrapped around this idea of God's generosity and his abundance that's available for you so that you can get out of the scarcity mindset that, that lives in fear. The first question is, who's your God? Is he the father of Jesus who loves to give good gifts to his children? Is that how you see him? Really? Second question is, uh, what's your goal? Is it God's kingdom and his righteousness? If your goal was self-reliance and self-sufficiency, that went out the window. If your goal was, you know, all about just your company, even what happens with your company. If my goal was the church, like we built this, you know, church building out, we raised a bunch of money to do it, we spent a bunch of money, it still costs us a bunch of money. If my hope is in the building and using it and all of the structures and the systems we built in the church, that's not working right now. So yeah, that can cause me a lot of stress. But what if my goal is to seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, his will? I can look for that beyond the bounds of what I normally think. In this time, God can still expand his kingdom, not just through the services of our church meeting together. We've actually had more people watching our services online than we have ever had actually attend our services. We're getting the message out to more people in this time and seeing God's kingdom grow. More people are open to God because of the fear that's driving them to their knees and causing them to look for answers. They're open to you sharing the good news with them. They're open, your neighbors, like what better time when everybody's home for you to actually get to know your neighbors and start loving your neighbor? Now, from a distance, I get it. I'm not telling you go over to their house. But to the people that I see down on the, the, the beach trail that are out walking or the people that are outside, like we have this opportunity to build connection, to build relationship, to be with our families, to take the, the tools of social media and online technology and use that to see the kingdom expand in this time because of the time that you have to practice the way of Jesus, you can nurture your relationship with God because of the authenticity that comes with being honest with the struggle of anxiety and stress and being at home and having to deal with all this and then building our intimacy with God, having an opportunity to love the people that are right with us and thinking about the restoration of all things and how we can play a part in the kingdom. We can see God's kingdom expand during this time. We can see God's will be done his will to you know, stop some of the divisions in our world and bring people together. I, I just think this is a time where people are seeing common humanity in each other and recognizing, you know, sure, there are people that are still all divided among partisan lines and blaming this person or that person or doing that. But listen, God's will, man, he prayed that we would be one as Jesus is one, that the church, we would be one. And he gave us this prayer where, you know, we pray for all of us, our Father in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, uh, you know, forgive us our debts, like, you know, lead us not into temptation. It's all us. There's no them. And I see that God's will is happening and bringing people together. And I'm, I'm going to fight for that. Are you working for God's kingdom and his will? What's your goal? Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. All these other things will be added to you. He knows what you need. He'll take care of that stuff. Yes, your job's important. Yes, getting back to that will be important. Yes, rebuilding your nest egg will be important. But if that's what your goal in life is, man, you're going to be always disappointed. You're always going to be on edge. You're always going to be worried. And it's because of that last thing that Jesus said, where is your gold? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And if your treasure is in your 401k or in your house or in, you know, your job or the plans you had for next weekend or the vacation you were planning on taking that got canceled, yeah, you're going to be disappointed. But if your treasure is in heaven where neither moth nor rust can destroy, where the stock market doesn't break, 
uh, doesn't come crashing down, where it's secure. And how do you put treasure in heaven? Man, you value the things that, that last. You value people, and you're doing that right now. You give to the poor. And many of you have done that through the generosity fund or just through caring for your neighbors or the people that are around you. Uh, Unidos is doing great work in the neighborhoods in San Juan with people that have lost their jobs. We've had people in our church that have lost jobs and that have needed help. And our generosity fund is able to help those people. And many of you have given over and above, not just to the regular giving, but also to the generosity fund to help make those kind of things possible. That stores up treasure in heaven that nobody can take away from you. It's a portfolio that never has any risk. Where you put your treasure is there your heart will be. And if you want more of your heart to be more connected to God and more connected to his kingdom, invest more of your treasure there. Sell your stuff. Give it away. It doesn't matter. It goes away anyway. We have a generous God who provides for all of our needs. These three questions. Who's your God? If you really believe in that generous God, what's your goal? If your goal is to seek his kingdom and his righteousness, then all these other things will be taken care of. And where's your gold? Where you put your treasure is where your heart's going to be. And if you want your heart to have peace during this time, you need to have more secure place to put your treasure. And it's not just your money, but it's also your time, your attention. What are you paying attention to? What do you value the most? More than anything, I've watched this be a time for people to reevaluate their values and what they care about. And I've seen people walking with their families, spending time in relationships, rekindling old friendships, using social media to not just share memes, but also to connect with people in their life that they love and they care about. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I want to pray for you. And interestingly enough, these three questions go right along with the Lord's Prayer that we've been working on and using to pray on Thursday nights and on Sundays. Who's your God? He's our Father in heaven. What's your goal? His kingdom and His will. His name being hallowed. What's your, you know, uh, where's your your gold? It's it's in, um, your treasure is in, in heaven. And it's, it's us and sharing, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. It, it's, you know, uh, lead us not into temptation, that we're in this together. There is no them, there's only us. And so as we close this time out, I just would ask that you would pray with me. Our Father in heaven, you are our Father, you are Jesus' Father. And you are our Father. And we are seated with Jesus at your right hand in the heavenly places. We have all the inheritance that's coming to him. You are pleased to give us the kingdom. And we are your kids. Help us to believe it. Help us to live like it. And help us to hallow your name by representing you well. Not as a people who are afraid. Not as a people who uh, are are hoarding or are living in this... um, scarcity mindset that we've just got to take what's coming to us but those who are seated at your right hand working with you in the family business and know that it's your kingdom and it's your will that we're about so god help us to seek your kingdom your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven god we bring everything that's in our kingdom and under our authority under your authority we unplug it from anything the enemy wants to do using this virus or using fear or scarcity or hoarding or selfishness. We unplug it from all of that. We place ourselves firmly in the kingdom of God under the reign of Jesus. And we ask that your kingdom would come, that we would truly represent you, that our homes would be embassies of the kingdom of God, that in our neighborhoods, we would be able to see your will be done, that we would love our neighbors as ourself, that we would represent you to the people around us, that we would be available to help the poor and to sell our possessions as we need to and to give them away as we do your will. That we would share the good news of the gospel, that we would look for opportunities to send these messages and other encouraging words to people. 
that we would do your will in seeing people come together and seeing people be encouraged and building others up according to the need of the moment that it may benefit those who listen in everything that we say. That we may do your will in our homes with the way that we love our kids and the way that we love our spouse and the way that we love our friends and that we reach out to people. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on this earth. God, use this crisis to draw people to Jesus. Strengthen uh, the medical workers and the people that are working in those um, medical fields to try to help uh, people that are sick. God, bring healing to those that are sick. We know it's your will to heal the sick. You've done it. We saw you do it. Whenever people came to you with a need, you healed them. You cast out demons. You healed sickness. You brought people to life. God, do your work and use us to do it. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There is no virus in heaven. There is no sickness, no mourning, no crying, no pain. And so we ask for the end of that on this earth. And we ask that you'd help us to be part of that solution. God, give us our daily bread. We ask that you'd give all of us our daily bread. And we ask that you would give us the courage to share with those who don't have daily bread so that we could store up treasure in heaven even as we care for our brothers and sisters, even as we care for the least of these. And you take it personally as the way we care for you. God, give us eyes to see who has a need and give us the courage to meet it. God, give us generosity of heart. Give us your heart by your spirit to give sacrificially, generously, to lay down our lives the way that you uh, lay down your life for us. Let us give of our time, of our money, of our energy, of our focus. And God, give us our daily bread. Provide for us. God, I pray specifically that you would provide for those that have lost jobs, for those that have lost money in the markets, for those that are worried, God, that they would trust you as their provider, as the one who is generous and meeting all their needs. And God, forgive us. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Thank you that you are a forgiving God and that you liberally gave away forgiveness. We give it to the people that have offended us, to the people that have said stupid things, to the people that have, have hoarded things, the people that are responding in fear. Whoever it is, God, help us to continue to forgive and we ask for your forgiveness. And God, lead us not into temptation whether to fear or to anxiety or to selfishness or to isolation. Help us not to give in to any of those temptations. We reject those things as evil. We reject uh, this virus as evil. Deliver us from the evil. Because we know, God, that your will is for life and life to the full. And so we bless people that are sick with life to the full. We come against any sickness and infirmity and worry in the name of Jesus. We cast all of those things down. And it's your kingdom. It's going to come through your power working through us and ultimately for your glory. And so we pray all these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Everybody said, amen. So I wanted to introduce uh, just a new song. I, I've song chorus kind of came to me um, just randomly before bed, and then the past two days I've just been working out this idea. And when I heard what Todd was speaking on, it just seemed to fit. Um, and so it's new, but um, I just think God wants us to to sing it. So. I surrender, I surrender all I am, casting my cares down, you know what to do with them. I surrender, laying everything down, laying my face to the ground, pouring my insides out. You can have it all
love you just ask that you'd help us to man in the noise and the movement of what can feel like a time where we're sitting still but there's so much moving and so much information coming in and God we just invite your rest over our lives and we know you're willing to pour it out willing to give it but you need fertile soil and so God would you just Bring us back to this simple thing of just saying, I surrender. I lay down my face to the ground. I lay down my my cares to you because you know what to do with them. We can feel jumbled and overwhelmed, but you know what to do. You're not caught off guard. You're not worried. You're not afraid. And so we're just going to come back to this refrain, just surrendering our lives to you, surrendering our finances to you, our families to you. We love you, Jesus. And we're going to trust you. Trust you with tomorrow. Trust you with the rest of today. Hey, thanks for being with us this morning. Um, Looking forward to being with you again on Thursday night for a prayer meeting. And then uh, next week we'll have Palm Sunday and uh, and get started with with, um, our whole Easter season, which uh, probably be online, but we'll see if things change. God bless you. Have a great week.